Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're going to go over using here docs within a shell script. This could be useful if you have a multi-line string that you want to print out, assign to a variable, pipe to a different command, or redirect to a file. So throughout this video, we're going to go over quite a few little examples here that I have set up, and this whole entire script will be available on my site. I'll leave a link to that one in the description. But yeah, let's take a look here at the very first case here, which is the most common case of just echoing out a multi-line string, because all the other examples are kind of fundamentally built up off this example here. So this is the output that we see, right? ABC, ABC, and then we have this one, two, three, which is uh, a numbers variable that I have set up. This is just to demonstrate that you can do variable interpolation or expression interpolation inside of a here doc. But yeah, let's focus a little bit on the syntax before we move on to the other examples. So we have this idea of a multi-line string being sent to the cat and then cat is going to echo it out. You know, here docs are not limited to shell scripting. This is a very common feature in a lot of programming languages and they tend to all work in a very similar way. Uh, but yeah, we have this idea of a delimiter. You know, this is at the top and on the bottom and it's very important that these match. For example, you know, if I add some extra characters at the end and run this, then this is just not going to work because these don't match up. And we can even see too, like Vim in my case here, is helping me know that something is a little bit busted here because the syntax highlighting is broken. But it doesn't need to be named EOF, which is end of file. As long as the top and the bottom ones match, then things will work. But at a convention, you know, it seems to be very common practice to use EOF or sometimes end. Uh, but I've seen EOF used in a lot of scripts and I just happen to use them personally as well. So let's stick with that. Now, there is one important takeaway here too, just around these delimiters in that the bottom delimiter needs to be on its own line and also start at the first character uh, of that line as well. For example, you know, if we tried to pull this up to the uh, previous line and run it. Nope, that is not going to work. Likewise, if we try to just indent that a bit, it is not going to work as well. And, you know, the indent part is kind of interesting because, you know, if you had this here doc inside of a function, then a lot of your code inside that function is going to be indented. And you may think like, well, you know, maybe I can have my EOF indented as well. Nope, that's not going to work as is. So yeah, you know, just remember that uh, detail as well. But this is not limited to multi-lines. For example, if we have just a single line here and run that one, it is going to work just fine. And there actually may be a use case where you may want to use a here doc even with one line. For example, you know, if you have some type of string that just has uh, a mixture of single and double quotes, we can actually uh, run this and see that things just work. You don't need to escape the single quotes or double quotes, you know, as opposed to, you know, having something like echo where you might just have something like a hello world but like, what if you wanted world to be wrapped in double quotes and it's like you need to escape them or instead of escaping them, you know, maybe you can just wrap this whole thing in single quotes instead. And then you can just, you know, put your doubles here. And then, uh, you know, this is also a valid string as well. But yeah, you just don't need to worry about all of that when using a here doc. So if you have a string that's, uh, you know, a real big mixture of single and double quotes, then it could be useful to deal with that here using a here doc. So let me just unwind this back to how it was before though, uh, which I think is that. Are we in a working state? We are. Cool. So let's go to the next example here, which is going to be very, very similar. But in this case, well, I don't want to delete that one. All right. Uh, I want to uncomment that one. Thank you. And then I'm going to rerun this one here. Let's make sure we have some room here. And uh, this is going to be very similar to what we just saw before. But now notice the output here. Instead of uh, one, two, three here for numbers or literally just putting like W-O-W -W for wow, it is putting out the uh, literal string itself. So in this case, the only difference between the top here and the bottom is that I've wrapped the top delimiter in single quotes. Now, technically, you can wrap this in double quotes and it's going to do the same thing. In other words, it's not going to interpolate variables or expressions. But yeah, this could be pretty handy if you are writing the help menu of a CLI tool or something and you just want to echo out like the actual dollar sign, uh, you know, potentially like this. Although there are other ways to do this as well. For example, if we go back to the original statement here without the single quotes and we run this, then, you know, we do see uh, the interpolated values here. But, you know, if you did want to just have this one uh, set up here, you can do that just by escaping the dollar sign uh, and things are going to work here. But let me bring, bring it back to the single quotes here. And by the way, I prefer using single quotes instead of double uh, because if you go to echo and other commands as well, you know, when it comes to variable interpolation on the shell, you know, if you did something like this and you, and you echo that one out and then you do the same thing here with single quotes, then we are going to get a different result here. One of them is going to interpolate, the other is not. And take a guess here. Yeah, the one with the single quote is literally going to output what you see. So with that convention in mind or the way it works, I kind of like using single quotes just because that's how it works in other areas too, even though technically both of them work. But yeah, this is still on the topic of just, you know, echoing out essentially a multi-line string. Now let's just say that you want to 
have a multi-line string set up to be in a variable, and then maybe you can do something with that variable later in your script. And that's what we get over here. So let me just uh, clear things and run it. We can see we get ABC, there's our multi-line string here. But in this case, we're just building on what we learned before, right? We still have our same delimiters. You notice that you know this one is on its own line. You know you can't really even pull up this parenthesis here and run that because then things are going to fail as well. So yeah, very important that it's on its own line here. You know, but we have command substitution here. This is basically getting run in a subshell, just taking the output of all this, assigning it to a variable, and then I'm echoing it out there. Also, it's very important to note, or at least important to note here, that if this variable were not quoted, then uh, all the new lines get replaced here, or maybe get, I don't know, switched up to be spaces. I'm not exactly sure on the implementation details, but it's a good idea to quote your variables anyway. I've done videos about one about that one in the past. So this is one way to um, assign a here doc to a variable. Could be very useful depending on what you're working on. Now, if you've ever Googled for this in the past, you may have encountered like a Stack Overflow post that suggests that you may want to do it this way instead. So if we run this one, uh, let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, so this one actually isn't going to work because uh, at the very top of the file here, I have this defined as shell. We'll need to switch over to bash to use this one because I'm pretty sure the dash D flag doesn't uh, exist in POSIX compliant shell. But if you run this one here, oh, now we have an unbound variable. Yeah, okay, because I actually literally copied that example from Stack Overflow, but this one really needs to be named letters because it's it's not like var. Uh, but yeah, in this case, we can see one, two, three here. Things work uh, basically the same. A little bit less portable since we need to use bash, although that's not really a horrible thing. But I don't know. The, the upvoted answer was like, well, let's avoid using like a useless cat, right? This is, for example, a useless cat because uh, you can technically solve it using it this way. But, you know, there was one comment on that one that was pretty upvoted as well, which I tend to agree with in that this kind of builds up on prior knowledge that you already know. Like we demonstrated how to do this without a variable. Then it's like, well, we just wrap it in uh, this and we can, you know, we can put it into a variable and then use it and it's good. But this requires all sorts of different knowledge about how read works, what do these flags do, et cetera. Um, so I actually don't mind using the useless cat version just because it's a little bit more portable and it's a little bit more readable and it kind of builds on fundamental knowledge that you are able to achieve um, without assigning it to a variable. So, you know, in that case, I really uh, probably wouldn't use this solution. I would use the other one, but feel free to let us know in the comments below. If you have other, I don't know, considerations for wanting to use this over the, the useless cat version. So let me just actually bring that back to how it was before. I'll come it out like the other ones and then we'll just move on to some of the other ones here i'll bring this back to being shell 2 and by the way that's why i didn't set like pipe fail and stuff because that's only uh going to be compatible with um, bash or bash compatible shells but yeah let's go down here to the other one here oh yeah now we're going to switch up things to be a little bit more focused on piping the output of a multi-line string to another command so if we go and rerun this command now we can see we get abc notice how they're out of order though right right cba here but i'm just piping this into sort and then sort is doing uh what it needs to to sort all these lines so that it's actually sorted. So in this case, you know, very similar to what we were doing before, right? This uh, left-hand side here is no different than uh, the beginnings of this um, video here where we we're just cutting out multi-line string. But now in this case, yeah, just piping it to sort. And you may think like, well, that's kind of interesting. Like, wouldn't you really just do this instead uh, if you're like dealing with how normally pipes work? And uh, not quite, I guess it depends on how you kind of visualize how this thing, like in my mind, like this whole EOF from top to bottom is sort of like owned by the left side of the pipe. And we're still like piping stuff into another command, just like you would if you were to like, you know, echo something into sort or just pipe whatever into another command. So fundamentally, it's no different how you normally would use pipes here. But yeah, uh, piping it in is, is quite useful. But there are maybe some scenarios where certain tools will not let you pipe the output of another tool as input to it itself. So we're going to go over two examples here. They're both the same. None of them are really specifically related to kubectl, which is a, a command line tool to interact with Kubernetes clusters. And the other one is curl. But yeah, let's actually just run this and see how things work. This is actually going to fail on purpose because uh, you know, I don't have a cluster set up, but it does demonstrate the, um, the interesting takeaway here, which is we are still piping the output of this multi-line string using here docs into another command in kubectl in this case, but kubectl, uh, the apply command at least, it will not allow you to uh, pipe in the output of something else into it as standard in and then like do something with that. Instead, it actually requires that you pass in a file. And in this case, there is, it's not quite a Unix convention because not all tools support it, but a lot of Unix tools and other tools like third-party tools do support this idea of using um, a hyphen or a dash as a file name. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know how you want to even describe it, like a special placeholder file name to say like, by the way, when we're using dash as the file name, then read that file 
file in from standard in instead of like some file that really exists on disk. So it gives us the ability to do this pipe method here for tools that don't support that. Uh, but it's like syntactically no different than before with the pipe one. But yeah, that's pretty handy here. And actually, you know, if you happen to use Kubernetes, you may have noticed in their documentation, they tend to use this type of syntax a lot. And it's actually quite handy if you're writing a script or something like that, just to, you know, take a file, uh, you know, multi-line string, whatever it happens to be, and just like pipe it into another command here, even if it only requires you passing in a file. You know, this avoids needing to, I don't know, create like temp files on disk and then use them and then delete them afterwards. Quite handy indeed. And uh, yeah, the other example is no different really than the kubectl one here with curl. Let's go and take a look here at that one and see what that looks like when we run it. So if we do this, you know, in this case also we're getting an error because I just don't have a web server running on port 80 uh, on my local host here. But the really important takeaway is we're using the same dash pattern as before. Now curl also, you know, requires that uh, use the at simple here to, to basically denote that we're dealing with um, a file here. But in this case, you know, the EOF stuff is no different than before, right? We have our delimiters here. And in this case, you know, you can, you can imagine if you were to send like um, some JSON payload to some request, you know, making like a post request somewhere with a uh, content type JSON, et cetera, then um, yeah, you can do this and it's pretty handy. Again, it avoids you needing to create some type of temp file on disk to send this over to curl and then curl would use that. You can all do this in one shot here. I've, I've actually used this pattern quite a bit in a number of shell scripts. And if you're wondering why data binary is being used, not dash dash data or dash D for short. You know, this one just makes sure that uh, the new lines are intact here when you actually go ahead and um, send the request over to curl. But um, yeah, okay, cool. So that handles kind of just like piping to some degree with a couple of different examples here. Lastly, we have this one example here where we are redirecting the output of the multi-line string to a file. So let's rerun this one here and see what happens here. We do see the output of ABC. That is thanks to actually cutting out this file. And then I just RM the file a little bit afterwards so we don't need to have it lingering on disk. But really the takeaway here is, you know, this is the same exact pattern that we saw before just outputting a multi-line string, except we're redirecting it out to a file here. And then, yeah, I just cut that file out and remove it. So yeah, not too bad. Um, these are all very similar examples that kind of build up on prior knowledge to do all sorts of different things. Of course, you know, if you wanted to append to the file instead of create a new one, you can always use uh, the double uh, greater than signs here. And in this case, I'm not gonna cut it out and then delete it. But in this case, if we run this one a couple of times here, you know, three, four, five, whatever, how many times that we want here. Now, if I do cut this one out, we are going to see multiple results here because it's appending to it. It is not just rewriting a brand new file here. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. You know, let us know in the comments below some of the use cases around you wanting to use here docs or, you know, multi-line strings. And with that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.